Elizabeth dumps her teaching career as she has a very wealthy fiancé. She leaves the school in style in her high-end Mercedes sports car, but hardly did she know that bad news is waiting for her. She needed a break in their relationship as Elizabeth spends a hefty amount of money. He realizes that she never really loved him. The relationship ends there. Now she is again on the road, and she has no choice but to rejoin the school. She returns to school in a shabby old car, red-colored nonetheless. Elizabeth does not change. On her return, she gets into a rivalry with her colleague, Amy. Lynn, one of Elizabeth's colleagues, befriends her on the pretext that she will treat Elizabeth. Elizabeth does not miss an opportunity, however frivolous it is, so she agrees. She tells Lynn during eating that she chose the profession because of shorter work, long summer holidays, and no accountability. But now, her goal shifts. She is hunting a guy who can take care of her. Elizabeth discloses her intention to get a new pair of tits, as it is very difficult to compete against Barbie doll-type girls in the romantic market. She starts hunting for a new wealthy boyfriend in nightclubs. She wants commitment so she can live on his money as she wishes, but her efforts fail. She does not attend orientation, seminars, or meetings at school. Amy, her rival, does every hard work to make her class interactive and interesting to the students. She is a hard-working and caring teacher. On the other hand, Elizabeth is the opposite. She is lazy and super superficial. From her first class itself, she shows movies to the kids just to kill the duration of the period. Russell, the gym teacher of the school, is romantically attracted to Elizabeth. He comes up to her and asks her out. She refuses rudely and gives the excuse that she does not date co-workers. Amy comes to her and asks if Elizabeth is showing movies in class. She goes on to suggest to Elizabeth some other things which Elizabeth has not even an iota of interest in. Now, Elizabeth asks Amy directly if she has got any problem with her, and their rivalry intensifies. Scott, a new handsome math teacher, joins the school as a sub. Elizabeth goes up to him and shows a lot of interest in him to the point that she offers to guide him to his room. They introduce themselves to each other. Elizabeth finds out this new guy is not only handsome, but also very wealthy. Elizabeth's eyes shine with greed and new hopes. She asks him directly about his marital life. He says that he has just got out of a relationship and shows Elizabeth his ex's picture on his phone. She has big boobs. Elizabeth is now convinced that it is time to get breast implantation. She visits a plastic surgeon. She is amazed by the work of the doctor there and decides to go for the surgery. When the receptionist tells her the total amount to be paid, which is a huge sum, Elizabeth is awe-stricken. The obvious reason is that she does not have that much money. She calls up everyone for money, her grandmother, her dad, and even her ex. She tells him that the breaking of the engagement was humiliating and tries every way to extract the money from him, but there is no success. She continues to show movies to the kids during class. She gets to know about the car wash, which she is not interested in at first. But the money the car wash generates raises her eyebrows, and she is instantly interested, as the money may sponsor her boobs augmentation. She rushes to the principal's room to convince her that she is going to do that, which is usually done by Army. The principal asks her about her showing movies in class on Amy's complaints. She lies and says, some clips, maybe. Elizabeth sees that the principal has a soft corner for dolphins. She falsely shows interest in dolphins and manipulates him to get what she wanted, handling the car wash affairs. This is the car wash day. It is an enormous success. It is not because of her dedication. But the way she does it, she reaches there in her hot pants and bikini bra. Her long and sleek legs catch a lot of eyes. She is a crown puller indeed. The parents of the kids are visibly excited, and even the kids are visibly, you know what it means, winky. Scott comes here in his supercar. Elizabeth continues with her chase. Scott says that he is not ready yet, but they can if she is patient. Elizabeth says that he is worth the wait. Yeah, he is worthy of his fortune. Amy sees the success of the car wash, and she is envious, and this new bond between Elizabeth and Scott makes her even more jealous. Amy is desperate to convince the principal that Elizabeth is embezzling the money from the car wash, so desperate that she even follows the principal to the toilet, but the success of the car wash fails her in convincing him. The rivalry between Amy and Elizabeth reaches new heights. It involves Scott now and their attempts to win over him. He turns into a trophy. Whoever wins, well, wins everything. She continues to show movies in the classroom. While the students watch movies, she secretly takes drugs. The pre-test exam is incoming. Elizabeth does not have any idea of that. What more can you expect? Yeah, she is that kind of teacher. 
In a chat, Amy tells Scott in front of Elizabeth that Elizabeth is going to get her breasts augmented as she is not happy with herself. She scores a brownie. Elizabeth is visibly pissed off. She looks like burning inside, in rage. But Scott seems to put a bomb as he says that he is pro-choice. These two ladies continue to play a tug of war, keeping Scott in the middle. Amy surprises Scott with her jokes and humor. Elizabeth is not distracted by any criticism or judgment. She is ever motivated to get her fake boobs as she adds every penny to get what she wants. But she falls behind Amy in the race to win over Scott. Amy gives Scott her favorite book, which surprisingly turns out to be Scott's favorite too. When Amy is doing well, Elizabeth kills her time smoking weeds, but Russell, the gym teacher, is still after Elizabeth. He does not lose hope. Meanwhile, Scott tells her that she has a crush on Amy. Elizabeth says that Amy is not his type. She lies that Amy is a lesbian, and she is after him only because of his money. But these lies don't deter Scott, as he is sure what he is up to. Disappointedly, Russell and Elizabeth go to smoke. They discuss life and give each other a reality check. The school's teacher's band is playing tonight. Here, Scott dedicates a song to Amy, and she sheds tears in happiness. This ends every hope that Elizabeth had, and speculation. Her dream is shattered, and she looks like a raging bull in anger and defeat. On her way back, Lynn tells her about the state exam and the chances of winning a bonus for the best-performing teacher. A new route opens up for Elizabeth to endorse herself for her augmented boobs. From the next day, she transforms herself completely. The careless, lazy teacher now pushes every student to get a good score. She teaches Harper Lees to kill a mockingbird as an assignment. Amy, on the other hand, feels threatened by the seriousness of Elizabeth in teaching as she thinks that Elizabeth can get the bonus. She does everything to put Elizabeth behind. She complains to the principal that Elizabeth does drugs in her class. The principal says that considering the graveness of the charge, he needs proper evidence to investigate. Elizabeth's students are not used to her new seriousness. They disappoint Elizabeth to the core with their performance. Now Elizabeth has nothing but only one way left. She disguises herself in a wig and poses as a journalist of the Chicago Tribune and goes to interview Carl Malabi, a professor who is in charge of preparing and distributing question papers for the state test. She accuses the board of being racially discriminatory and demands to see this year's test paper to steal it. But Carl says that it is classified, which does not satisfy her. But he says that she can see the question only when the test is done. She gets to know that the question paper is in Carl's office. Now she has to change her plan. They drink together. Carl is heavily drunk already. She intentionally gets into sexual conversation. She says that sex in an office turns her on. They go back to Carl's office. Carl is excited as ever. They start to drink. She hands over a glass of wine to Carl, which she sedated with drugs. Carl hurries to have sex on his desk, but he hardly knows how big a fool he is. Elizabeth waits for Carl to pass out and leaves with the answer key. Quite a success. This is the day of judgment. The results of the state exam are out. The school has ranked among the top in the whole state. To everybody's surprise, Elizabeth got the highest score in the entire county and won the bonus. When the principal announced, Amy thought that it was herself, much to her dejection. It was none other than her rival, Elizabeth. She is rattled, and she can sniff something's wrong. Elizabeth is an inch closer to her dream of a bigger breast. Well, only some dollars closer. This bonus changes her life. She goes back to the clinic again and books an appointment for the surgery. Back at the school, everybody prepares for the school trip to Springfield. Elizabeth sneaks into Amy's classroom with an evil motive. She rubs the leaves of poison ivy on an apple. Amy is moved by seeing the apple on her desk and by the gesture which she thinks that it was kept by a student for her. She takes a bite before rubbing it on her cheeks. Amy gets allergic rashes all over her face, and she has to drop out of the trip. She realizes what could have been done to her, a conspiracy by the evil Elizabeth. Amy goes back to Elizabeth's desk, moves the whole desk to her class, and finds out that Annie's wig was missing. She also discovers the torn area of the question paper, which she finds out to be the address of the question setter's office. Her suspicion turns out to be right. Amy goes to Carl's office and digs up the truth. Back in the principal's office, she accuses Elizabeth of tempering with the test. She convinces the principal this time to get an investigation with evidence like Annie's wig. The principal is very frustrated with all these developments, as they can cause the reputation of his institution. Now, in Springfield, 
There is no Amy between Elizabeth and Scott. She can pray any time on Scott. Russell gives a hit, but the sub-math teacher, Scott, is too naive to understand. They go to Scott's hotel room and have sex with the dresses on. That is, dry humping. Elizabeth's evil intention goes to an even higher notch. She records the audio of their moaning and chat during the act and secretly sends it to Amy. Amy listened to that and was shocked like hell. In Springfield, a sensitive kid proposes to his crush, who is well above his league. She is purely superficial and opposite to the boy. She refuses right away. The other boys laugh at him, and the boy is heartbroken by all these incidents and cries alone. Elizabeth goes up to and consoles him. During this, she realizes how superficial she is. Russell still does not lose help. They come closer to each other this time. Amy rushes herself to Springfield. She ignores Scott's courtesy and goes directly to Elizabeth and reveals that she knows everything that Elizabeth has done. Carl Halabi, state test, and most gross among these, all sleeping with her boyfriend. She threatens Elizabeth with imprisonment for the outright disregard and criminal tempering with the state test. Back in the school, Elizabeth finds out that her desk is replaced by Amy's desk. She instantly gets a plan set in her mind. The superintendent visits to investigate the incident, and he is furious that an allegation to this degree can come up. Amy amplifies the situation more. Carl Halabi is also a part of the investigation. He earlier told Amy that he would tell them everything that happened. Now, Elizabeth sends his nude photos to blackmail him and to keep him mum. He appears before the board and denies knowing Elizabeth, to the utter defeat of Amy. Amy is dejected. She asks for a retest. Elizabeth acts innocent. Now, Amy fights harder. She accuses some of the teachers of using and abusing drugs in the class, signaling Elizabeth. Elizabeth agrees with this and asks for a police investigation. The police sniffer dog comes to the school and goes to Amy's classroom. Boy, she is not prepared for this. The police officer finds the desk clean. Amy is right, but her joy is short-lived. Elizabeth suggests that there might be a false button. The police officer opens the drawer again. And yes, he discovers drugs from there. Amy denies that it is not hers. Now, with her reputation, there is none to believe her. She fires up in agitation. The police drag her down from the school. At the end of the year at the school, Amy is now transferred to another school. Scott approaches Elizabeth, and she refuses his advancement. She even drops the idea of her breast implantation. Russell and she starts their relationship. At the school, in the new session, she is the new career counselor.